Jeremy Bowen reports on the significance of tonight's hostage releases. Natalie Renan and her mother Judith, flanked by Israeli soldiers, emerged into Israel after negotiations led by Qatar. They'd come from Chicago to visit family in Israel when they were taken by Hamas. Their release, said the International Red Cross, was a sliver of hope. When President Biden was here earlier this week, the release of the hostages was one of his priorities. Antony Blinken, the US Secretary of State, went to Qatar, which also hosts a Hamas office. Qatar's connections were crucial. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, about an hour ago, uh, two American citizens held by Hamas since October 7th uh, were released. Uh, these two Americans are now safely in the hands of Israeli authorities in Israel. The urgent work to free every single American, to free all other hostages, continues, as does our work to secure the safe passage out of Gaza for the Americans who are trapped there. In Tel Aviv, while the negotiations were happening, families and friends of the more than 200 people taken as hostages by Hamas were holding a vigil. 20 of the missing, Israel says, are under 18. The people here will be hoping that now the principle of doing deals is established, more might be possible. The photos are going up on the wall of the Defence Ministry. The presence of hostages in Gaza puts pressure on Israel's generals and politicians, as Hamas must have intended. In a small country, the hostage crisis draws in many families. Daily life here is on hold. The war dominates everything. Israelis are united behind their flag and their army and in their contempt and hatred for Hamas. They are not united about their Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, a highly divisive figure whose opponents believe neglected their security. The vigil is a powerful event. But it started when one man, Avichai Brodets in the black T-shirt, came here on his own. His wife and three small children were taken from a border kibbutz by Hamas. If you're sitting on your couch now, look down at your son playing right next to you, you know, you know what's right, you know we, that he's in the right place. You know, my kids have done nothing wrong. My, you know, we are Yuval and Ofri, which are four and a half, eight and ten. Ofri just celebrated her birthday, she's still got cake in the fridge. So, you know, we all know what the right thing is to do, where, where, where they should be, where my wife should be. So, you know, it's a pretty easy, pretty, pretty easy choice to make. Just, you know, bring them home to me. Israelis and plenty of others, including President Joe Biden, say this is their equivalent of the attacks on America by Al-Qaeda on September the 11th, 2001. And for Israelis, this is not a trauma you can get used to. Every day they're learning more about these people, about the missing, about the dead. And that sadness and anger underpins the resolve of the government to hit back, to get their people, bring them home, and to destroy Hamas. Pain is universal. After an Israeli raid in Tul Karim on the West Bank, five children were among 13 Palestinian dead. An Israeli soldier was killed as well. At the mortuary, Palestinian families said goodbye to the boys aged from 11 to 15, bystanders who were killed by a drone strike. Palestinians on the West Bank held protests after the noon prayer. The uneasy, unpleasant, but mostly predictable rhythm of the conflict has gone. The only certainty ahead is more pain. And Jeremy is here with me. Um, fantastic news for the families of these two hostages. But one wonders in a wider context how significant it is that they have been released. Well, the International Red Cross, who were part of the process, called it a sliver of hope. A sliver because there are more than 200 people there. Um, I think there is a principle established now that Hamas will do a deal. And so I think those hostage families I was speaking to today in Tel Aviv 
will be delighted to hear that and they'll be thinking, well, maybe we might be next. One question, why choose Americans first? Well, the Americans have been pushing, but also I think President Biden has been trying to be a bit of a moderating influence on the level of force the Israelis use. Perhaps Hamas think that that's significant too, and maybe he might do more of that. And there's another thing, and that is that the whole purpose of taking hostages for Hamas was to have leverage over the Israelis. A few years ago, the Israelis exchanged more than a thousand Palestinian prisoners for one hostage. They've exchanged, they've exchanged as well other prisoners for bodies. So they must think, well, if we've got that many for one, what could we do with 200? Indeed. Okay. Jeremy, thank you. Jeremy Bowen there. Well, we're going to get more from our North America editor now, Sarah Smith, who's live in Washington. Sarah, the two hostages released, they are American citizens, as we've been hearing. And tonight we're wondering what the White House has been saying about all this. Well, President Biden has put out a statement saying he is overjoyed at the release of these two Americans, and he has, in fact, spoken directly to their family here in the United States as well. And he has mentioned working around the clock to try and secure the release of all the American hostages. There has clearly been a lot of activity. And this bit of good news does come at the end of a week of extraordinary diplomatic focus on the Middle East from America. We had that dramatic trip to Israel from President Biden on Wednesday and an unusual live televised address from the White House last night. And I think it is really important and interesting to note, as Jeremy was alluding to there, that every time we hear from President Biden and he talks about Israel's right to defend itself, he also always mentions the need to respect the laws of war and do everything possible to try to avoid civilian deaths and casualties when Israel comes to respond. So while the president is obviously wanting to show his solidarity with the state of Israel, he appears at the same time to be trying to contain their reaction and in doing so try to stop this conflict from spreading beyond where it is already at. And that is pretty clearly just as much of a priority for America as condemning Hamas's attacks and working to secure the release of all the other hostages that are still in Gaza.